the LED setup on this thing is some of the best looking LEDs I've seen on any quad in a really long time. So huge kudos to Diatone for that. However, I would argue, is it really necessary since you don't really see your quad when it's flying in the air. That's why I haven't really cared for LEDs. They just kind of complicate the matter. However, this is a ready to fly quad and it comes pre-installed with LEDs. These are actually uh, PC boards that they made specifically for this canopy. So it's really super duper nice. So this thing is one of their new ready to fly quads. And a word about Diatone. Diatone is a company that seems to pride themselves on their construction quality and the way they put things together. As you can see here, the motor wires are routed underneath the ESC board before they are soldered onto the ESC. And you can see the solder joints look really beautiful. They finish all their carbon. All their carbon is completely sealed around, along the edges. It feels like this frame is actually made from a um, quasi-isotropic carbon. It does not feel like a linear carbon. Also, I don't know why they have curved arms. That is not favorable for uh, carbon in general. So I guess it's just a design feature that they did. I hope they just don't do that anymore. But it's not that big of a curve. It's a very gentle curve. So it's probably not gonna affect the durability all that much. You can also see that the screws are recessed they're not countersunk, they're actually recessed into the carbon and the chrome lip of the screw is all that sticks out, which is just a really pretty little feature that they did on this frame. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of these model body frames, especially in three inch. I think three inch and up should be multi-unit, multi but as far as model body frames go, this is a pretty nice one. It looks like a four millimeter frame. Uh, the motors are 3B motors. I'm pretty sure they're 3B motors. They're 13, oh, sorry, 1408 4000KV motors, so that makes them a 4S motor for 3 inch. These are some really chunky, beefy motors, and that's how I absolutely knew when I took it out of the box that this thing was going to be an absolute rocket ship, and it definitely is. I would say it's definitely doing at least 110 miles per hour on a 4S 650 million battery, and that is the size battery I would recommend for this thing. Other things I would point out is that the stack has like nice gold detailing on there. Uh, their board quality is looks pretty good and diatone boards are generally pretty cost effective as well and they just happen to be a company that's very similar to Speedex in that they, they can pull off these kind of low cost things pretty effectively and it works out pretty well for them. Uh, you can also see there's a genuine TBS VTX on top of there which is hugely appreciated. Like I said, diatone really strives to have good build quality and use really good components. There's also a Runcam Swift on this on this uh, ready to fly as well. That's again, it's the camera I would prefer if I was to build something that's ready to fly and in this general size class. I absolutely like the Eagle better, a whole lot better, but the Eagle is not for everybody and it is also a higher priced camera so I don't know if it would be a good value to put in a ready to fly quad because at the end of the day they are trying to sell this thing for a good value and that is the main attraction to this thing I would say. So how do I think it actually performs? This is a relatively heavy chunky super powered <laughs> build for a three inch quad and the the electronics on this frame are suitable to run a five inch quad on like you can fully run 2207s, 2208s, 2306s on this stack. Sure, I don't think it'll do success. They have a success version of the 20 by 20 stack, but it's totally capable of it. However, they put it on a three inch frame. Now it is a super duper high powered three inch, but at the end of the day, it is still a three inch frame. These motors are also 1408 motors. These motors are totally suitable for a four inch twin blade, specifically the HQ four inch twin blade. It's a little skinny blade. I forgot the numbering of it. Maybe it's a 4040 or a 4030 or something, but that blade on these motors would be absolutely insane because it's just a fantastic combination. 1407, 1408 on that four inch twin blade is a really phenomenal combination, but they've used a three inch chunky prop for these motors, which is about the same load as a four inch prop. So how does it actually fly? It flies like an absolute rocket ship as I keep saying. But like I also keep saying, this is a relatively heavy, chunky three inch build. It is extremely high powered and you kind of got to keep that in mind and you got to realize or ask yourself if this is really what you want. Now they have made this to compete with five inch quads and I would say it definitely would compete with five inch quads. I'm pretty sure it's faster than all of my acro quads. Um, it is an absolute rocket ship. But like I keep saying, do you actually want that in this particular size class? 
Other things I would point out is that it is a little bit heavy for the three inch prop that it uses. It's definitely not underpowered, as I keep saying, but it is a little bit heavy for my taste. And what I mean by overweight for the three inch prop is that there comes a point in the throttle where the, the props really engage the air nicely. You get moving and it really starts like giving you a lot of power. And that point in the throttle, when you have a little bit more weight than maybe suitable for the prop, it kind of becomes like an on-off switch. Now, I'm not talking about a lot of weight. This thing weighs about 230 something or 240 grams all up weight. It's about 240 grams all up weight with a 650 milliamp 4S battery. So it's not a lot of weight, but for a three inch blade, it kind of sort of is in my opinion. Now, where that point lies to people to, from pilot to pilot obviously varies and it is entirely personal preference. But in my opinion, this thing is actually really difficult to fly because it has so much power. And when you hit that point where that power kicks in, it just jumps into the air. And so you essentially need to fly it like you're racing kind of all the time. That's just not my personal style of flying. However, it is a wicked fast, really fun quad to fly if you're looking for that sort of thing. I also think that it's one of the, it, of this sort of class of three inch ready to fly, super duper bonkers fast, I think it's probably one of the best ones we've seen in a while. It might be the best one on the market at this current time, just because the build quality is really nice. The components are, they're using are really nice. It performs really, really nicely. It's an overall really well built, really nice performing quad. And I do recommend it for somebody that wants this particular build style. Now, my opinion is that this layout, this build out should be used on something that's carrying a split, some sort of a lightweight HD camera, because it has so much freaking power. <laughs> it's unless you're racing, you don't really need or care to go that fast, especially in a package this small, because the throttle is just so touchy when you are flying it. I really am trying to point that out a lot because it really is a touchy quad to fly because it is so powerful. If you didn't realize, this thing is really, really powerful. Okay, that's enough about this thing. If you're, want, if you're looking for something like this, I would definitely recommend this. I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of bonus as well. You guys definitely know this quad. I've shown this quad before. This is my general toothpick class quad or toothpick quad. And these motors are from Diatone, as many of you guessed in previous videos. And um, I have been working with Diatone as well as about seven or eight other companies on developing a bunch of products. And I do have a bunch of products that are on the way. And this is probably the first one that is going to make its way to market. Now, this is something that I have dubbed the Cube because they told me that they don't want to use the, the the toothpick name and I totally understand that some people are a little bit antsy about companies copying things and they did also want everything to look sort of completely different now the canopy is very similarly copied from the canopy that has been designed um, for the toothpick not by me but has been designed for the toothpick um, but that's going to change entirely because while this is a really nice looking quad and the frame this particular version is a four millimeter frame and <laughs> they're super skinny this is quasi-isotropic carbon and it is absolutely rigid. I mean, this frame is how skinny, for how skinny it is, it is freaking rigid. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit overweight as well and that's one of the main things I've been battling them with. And this is the three millimeter version, which is not using the quasi-isotropic quasi carbon, so it is a little bit more flexible. However, I've already bashed it and it's held up pretty well. It's going to be made of the quasi-isotropic stuff, and I think it's going to hold up fine, but it also still needs to lose a little bit of weight. Now, these props are made by GemFan. They are another version of the King Kong 65mm prop, and it is a slight variation on the King Kong 65mm prop. I have developed a prop myself alongside this prop with GemFan, and this is their variant of it that they have kind of taken my design and taken it kind of the next step. This is the prop that these, these particular quads are going to ship with. I don't know when the shipping date will be, and it will not have this kind of canopy style and everything. I, I mean, it's not supposed to have it. And uh, as you can see, I, there's a standoff removed because there, there's no access to the USB port in there. Anyways, I'll go over the rest of the quad. This is a 16 by 16 stack. It's a 16 by 16 Mamba stack. It has a 200 milliwatt VTX on top, which is fantastic. It's got an F4 processor, the ESC board. It does 4S, I believe. I'm pretty sure it does 4S. 
and uh, it performs great. I mean, this, these are 1103 motors. Uh, I don't know who they're actually made by, but they're really, really powerful 1103 motors. The prop is a fantastic match for these motors. The frame is really, really nice. It's pretty, it, it feels like it's really durable. I have smashed it a couple times and it's held up so far, so I'm not really worried about it. The camera on here is the Nano 2 by my request. Not the Nano, not the $35 Nano. I actually like the Nano 2 more. And um, there's a lot of other little things that are going to be changing on the spot, particularly to drop some weight as well as make it more reasonable to run and build and use as a daily flyer. And so I'll talk a little bit about what I have personally been doing with all these companies. So I have a lot of designs that I've been working on and a lot of things that I really love developing. And the problem has been that these companies, the Chinese companies, they are just so quick at copying ideas that are any good. And it's gotten to the point where even if I just show an idea and it seems like a good idea, I've already done enough marketing for these Chinese companies to just jump on board and make whatever they want in this general style or whatever style I'm showing. And so I've decided to just partner up with these companies that draw inspiration from the things that I do and the things that other people would do as well. And in return, I get to use their resources to make their own products that they're gonna develop anyways a whole lot better than they are. And they also give me a very, very small, very small dividend on each sale as well, which I appreciate tremendously. So it's this kind of synergistic relationship where I'm not really getting compensated as much as I would like to, but hey, at least I'm not worried about the copying issue. And what's really interesting is that within these Chinese companies themselves, they actually have like a coalition of let's not copy each other. And specifically, well, I'm not, I can't name names, but there are a couple of companies that kind of lead the pack in terms of stay away from us or we're going to screw with you. <laughs> and that's actually happened. So I just find it as I've entered kind of this kind of field of working with them rather than working on my own and just doing things on my own, I've learned more about how they function internally, which is really interesting. Uh, the end result is that the users are going to get products that are going to be more reasonable to run on a regular basis because a lot of the time these companies don't actually know what it's like to run these things on a daily basis. I mean, they actually need somebody that has, you know, the daily logic of, okay, I don't use plastic screws for my stacks, which they have used on these two quads. I don't use plastic screws for my stacks because every time I crash, they just break. And it's a nightmare trying to replace these screws because it's like in the middle of my frame. Or let's not build a frame that makes it impossible to get to some components that might break and need to be replaced or things like, let's not put a standoff in the way of access to the USB port. Just simple things like that, as well as overall setups as to what kind of motors to use, what kind of props to use, what kind of class to make it. And then at the end, does it actually perform well? Does the ESC hold up? Does do things work out the way they should? Have we put things together the way we should so that they don't end up with something that has really, really poor flight quality or really poor flight time or is just generally inefficient or is just gonna burn out the first time somebody plugs it in, all that stuff is going to be solved. This particular quad is hopefully not going to look the way you see it. It's going to be a little bit different, particularly the canopy is going away because it just weighs too much. This one here weighs about 76 grams all up weight with the um, 2 S450 million battery. That needs to go down. It needs to drop about three and a half grams. It's actually pretty hard to do because this is a pretty optimized setup. It's just it's just hard to do. It's really hard to do on this tiny, small class. Anyways, that's enough talking. Um, this is going to come in the future. I don't know when. They tell me in about a month they're going to have um, a bunch ready, but we'll see what happens. It's just one of very many projects that I'm working on. Uh, Diatone in particular has like three of my projects, and they are you know, kicking butt, really, really kicking butt, and um, many more to come from other companies as well. If other companies are watching me and they would like to work with me, I have a, an agreement with all these companies as to how our relationship goes, and it's a very reasonable agreement. They have all agreed to it, and I didn't even write it. Another company wrote it for me. It's in Chinese and in English, or sorry, Mandarin and in English, so everybody can understand what's going on. Yeah, so I've got some companies making specific motors for other companies that are making the product so that everybody works together and everybody wins. So it's really awesome, and I really hope it works out. Yeah, more to come going forward. Floss your teeth. That's always helpful. Take care. Bye.